Good morning. Call this meeting to order. And um, Detective Alex Lepper, um, 28 years uh, on in homicide. Uh, now he's with the Child Exploit Task Force. He's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands. stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll remain standing. Our chaplain, Chaplain Brenda Smith, will lead us in prayer. Good morning. Please allow me the grace, amen, to pray in the vernacular of which I'm accustomed. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, we ask you right now, Father, if you would be in this room, we invoke your holy presence, Lord, to come into this place, to saturate the atmosphere, Lord God, with your holy presence, dear Heavenly Father, that we will all be set on one accord, Lord God, with our minds stayed, Lord God, on you, Lord God, and the for the benefit of this city, Lord God, for the benefit of our beautiful blood brothers and sisters in blue. Lord, we thank you for them, Lord God, and thank you for the blessing that they are to this city. We ask, Father, that you will give us wisdom. You said that if any desire wisdom, they ought to ask of you and you will give it. So we ask that you will grant us wisdom as we enter into this meeting, that you will stay here with us, Father. And even after everything is said and done, we put a seal upon uh, the progress, Lord God, that takes place as your love goes forth, Lord God, and we exalt you and recognize the, your gift that you have placed in to each and every one of these young people, Father God, we ask that you will be glorified when we leave this place and interact with the community. We ask that the community, Lord God, will have a heart, Lord, to seek you and unity, Lord, oneness of spirit. We just ask that, that you will do what only you can do, that you bring us together, and that you will uh, give us the wisdom to work together as one people. Now saturate us with your peace. Let your shalom be upon us, Lord. And we give you thanks and praise for your many blessings. In the name of your darling son, who is our, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The media unit is coming with uh, awards and commendations. Certificates of appreciation, Aaron Seyfried and David Myers. In February of this year, Payola, Kansas residents, Aaron Seyfried and David Meyer emailed the KCPD out of the blue. They had a new litter of puppies and wanted to know if KCPD would like to have a Dutch Shepherd. Seyfried and Myers spoke with the canine unit, stating that they were supportive of law enforcement in the area and that they knew this breed was used in detection and patrol work. At that time, the department had been discussing the creation of a new puppy program to counter the $13,000 cost of purchasing them trained from a vendor. In about a week's time, Sergeant Bill Brown and Sergeant Matt Taylor visited Seyfried and Myers to test and evaluate the puppies. When they arrived, Seyfried and Myers surprised them by saying they now had two puppies to donate. The sergeants were impressed by the puppies and selected two, later to be named Raven and Josie. Without Seyfried and Myers' donation and partnership, it would have been difficult to establish the new puppy program. For their outstanding assistance to the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department, Chief Joseph Maben, along with the Board of Police Commissioners, is pleased to present the Certificate of Appreciation to Aaron Seyfried and David Myers. Yeah, exactly. 
Certificate of Appreciation, Joy Marie Chamberlain. Joy Marie Chamberlain has been an invaluable community partner to the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. She has formed relationships, organized groups, raised funds, and donated countless hours, all to help the men and women of the KCPD. Much of this work has been done in coordination with the groups she belongs to, including the Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association and the Colonial Presbyterian Church. A couple of Ms. Chamberlain's accomplishments include coordinating the fundraising and purchase of 152 DNA boxes and 100 SD cards. Because of our efforts, the Regional Crime Lab has been able to conduct multiple DNA classes and train 80 new DNA officers. Ms. Chamberlain helped raise funds for more than 50 metal detector wands to increase safety when fingerprinting people. There are many countless more ways Ms. Chamberlain has helped. Maybe most importantly, she has invested her time to get to know our officers on a personal level. To date, Ms. Chamberlain has conducted 79 ride-alongs with officers on every watch in every patrol division. She's gotten a firsthand view of what they need and how she can better serve them. For her outstanding assistance to the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department, Chief Joseph Maven, along with the Board of Police Commissioners, is pleased to present the Certificate of Appreciation and a Ceremonial Baton to Joy Marie Chamberlain. Kathy wanted to pet the puppies, but uh, <laughs> right, yeah. we'll, do, we'll do that after the meeting. <laughs> I'll be long gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, mayor, who is your uh, mayor's designee for today? Uh, this week, this month rather, we have a, a new presenter, but somebody I've had the honor of serving with on the city council for seven, almost seven and a half years. That is Councilman Lee Barnes from the 5th District at Large, representing Southeast Kansas City and the entire city. Prior to his service on the City Council, in addition to his business career, he also served on the Kansas City School Board. So, Councilman Barnes, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr. President and other members of the Board of Police Commissioners. I uh, greet you all today as a member of the City Council who for seven years has voted to increase the budget every year, uh, voted to increase the number of officers uh, every year within that budget. And with doing that, I, I really got to understand and, and, under, and know that there is a need for uh, better communications within the city to the police, uh, police board, and and fellow officers. So I am I am pleased that over the last six or seven months that the um, levels of communications have have increased dramatically, and I want to thank uh, Interim Chief Maben for uh, for that, as well as Captain Daniel Graves uh, for making those efforts and having the follow through to make sure that. Um, the, le the levels of communication are open and, uh, and honest. Uh, I think that's a big part of what we have to make sure that happens is that we honestly talk about the needs of our community, the needs of our city. <clears throat> uh, I'd also come to you as someone who wants to explain the thought process of some of the council members who were falsely tagged with wanting to defund the police. Um, 
Initially, I was, I was somewhat reluctant to just address uh, the Board of Police Commissioners and the um, <coughs> Police Department itself, just simply because I didn't think, to be honest, that uh, what I had to say would really make any difference. Uh, you all govern the police department. Um, you know, it's up to others, you know, individuals to determine whether they think you're governing it uh, properly, um, effectively, or what have you. Um, but the monthly conversations that those of us in the, on the council are to bring to you, um, I didn't think it really would make that much difference. I'm, and I'm, and those those who've served with me for some time know that I'm going to be honest about the things that I say. And um, but I I decided I'd come and just give my perspective of how uh, the relationship can improve. Um, some things that may need to change. And with that, um, that's why I wanted to first start off talking about how uh, I think the perception of and, and us being falsely tagged, us meaning the city council was falsely tagged with wanting to defund the police. Uh, that in no way was on the mind of anyone who voted uh, to insert the community services pieces that we were trying to do uh, back in the uh, early spring. The community as it stands now is looking to city council members to give ideas as to how to reduce crime and improve relationships between them and the police. Our thoughts were that the interactions that occur between the police and the community are better suited to be some of the action, interactions are better suited to be addressed by social workers, mental health professionals, or trained mediators. With that thought, it was suggested that we enter into an agreement with the department. And as a part of that agreement, the department would, would provide certain community engagement, outreach, prevention, intervention, and other public services. Also as a part of that agreement, the city would add $3 million in funding or a new recruiting class. I think people kind of overlook that portion of uh, the agreement <laughs> we tried to enter into. We did add $3 million to add another uh, recruiting class. And I just remember um, at several community meetings that I've gone to, uh, we would hear that um, the police need more, need more members. They need, we need more officers. We need more officers. <coughs> every year, and I would explain that every year during budget, we would <coughs> increase the budget to add officers. And it would always come back to us in some form or fashion that we were denying the funding for officers. And that got, to be honest, that got a little irritating because we thought we were putting pen to paper to say, are, these are the dollars that you need for new officers. Well, that's what we'll do. But then it comes out when, it, when officers are not hired or for whatever reason, and we understand that there are circumstances that throughout the country in which you know, um, a lot of departments are short of officers and all of that. I'm not putting the blame on anyone, but I definitely don't want the blame to be put on us that we didn't provide the funding for the officers. So with that said, I'll, I'll just note that none of my colleagues uh, had any intention of, of taking funding away from the department, but wanted to look at the prevention, outreach, and engagement in public services side, and wanted the department to look at these things with intentionality. There's oftentimes when you don't uh, look at things with intentionality, they can can go by you. They can slide by you, and, and if you don't give it that front of mind thought, you look up and in a year, something that you thought about a year ago is not being done. So that's where our point of reference and our, mind, our mindset was at that time. And this was a mandate not just coming from the council, but this was a mandate coming from a lot of the people in our community. And we were honestly 
despite the mischaracterization, we were truly trying to find ways that our community can benefit from those dollars with crime prevention. Now, I know this last thing I'm gonna, I'll say will uh, probably not be very popular in this room, but again, um, I try to be as honest as I possibly can. I think it's past time that this community has local control of its police department. I don't say that with any malice. I, I don't say that with any uh, intention of uh, causing any ruckus about this happening. But I'm just being honest in terms of my seven and a half years of serving as a elected official for this city and understanding real well about what the community wants and needs. I think a good portion of the community understands that they want to have a better sense of how we are being policed. And the three reasons that, um, that I'll touch upon that I think um, this is a, a, necess a necess necessity at this point. First, we can uh, achieve substantial uh, econ economies of scale by merging a lot of the departments within the, um, the two entities between the city and, and the police. Um, if we look at the one IT project that we tried to do some years ago, um, and I'll be honest again, I'll say that um, at that time, the commanding officers were reluctant to try to implement this from happening. Um, that portion there would have saved the city, would have saved $5 million annually by just combining our IT departments. We can look at fleet management or fleet maintenance. There's no, there's no reason that police cars can't be worked on within our fleet department. There's no reason that, and I know there are special, special things that happen with police, police cars, but there are special things that happen with fire trucks that we are, um, our fleet maintenance department handles. So we have the individuals that can handle some of those things. And when we look at economies of scale, we all know that those kind of things can be handled more, more better when you have the economies of scale. Um, the last one I'll meet, mention is just up the purchasing department. Um, don't know exactly how many people you have in your purchasing department, but um, those individuals who, within our purchasing department are well qualified to be able to handle and purchase all of the needs that are happening within the police department. The second thing I'll talk about are better relationship between the department and the community. And this is somewhat of a, a difficult piece to talk about because I know as sworn officers out on the streets every day, we see a lot of good things happening with um, the police. But we also understand that there are pockets of communities who don't interact with police officers every day and, and have somewhat of a fear of them. I stand here today as a 58-year-old man and even though I'm on the city council, when I see a police car following me or behind me, not even following me, I get a little, little unnerved. This has happened to me all of my life just because of the perception that I may get pulled over. And, um, and again, even though I'm a city council person and, and knowing I'm not breaking any law, uh, but from eight years of this happening to you, you still get on edge. And so I think the communication, the lines of communication can still be better if there were, um, if we had local control and there was more direct contract, contact with our city officials and the police department. And believe me and understand, I in no way, um, want to try to tell the police department how to run this department. 
and no sense of, and I don't think any of my other colleagues, all of which, except maybe two, would probably agree with what I'm saying here right now. Um, and I'm, you, all, you, you all probably will know who those two are. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I'll talk about is what I consider um, undue influence of folks outside of, of the city. And I'll say this and um, with some sense of, of irritation, not at the police department, but from those folks who presented the undue, what I think considered undue influence. Uh, Senator Tony Lukenmeyer uh, is trying to impose up some impose upon something upon the city that he has no idea of how it will affect the city overall. This whole notion of increasing the budget to the police department, which um, I'm not against having some conversation about, but I don't want someone else telling me this is what you have to do. Um, and with that, he doesn't, he doesn't know, it doesn't seem to even, under, un, doesn't seem to care that, you know, we have positions that we have to fill in all facets of the city. Um, we've gone through major infrastructure issues that we have to fund there. And for someone to, without having a conversation with any council members that I know of, and I know he didn't have any conversations with the four African-American council members, tries to instill upon us a, something within our budget without having any conversation with us. Um, it's, it's almost, I'll just say it this way. It's, it's, it was real irritating that that was able to walk through the um, state legislature and no one gave mention of whether the city could even function or what we even thought about that. So um, those, are my, those are my comments. Uh, I'll open for any questions. Uh, again, I come, I come to you all as someone who has voted to increase the budget every year never gave a, a hard word. You all are probably, probably, many of you probably don't even know who I am because you don't hear my name in the, in the media um, because that's, that's not the way I operate. Uh, but I'm always open to have conversations about these things or anything that's happening within the city, within the police department that you think I may be able to help with. Again, uh, thank you all for, for allowing us to give some commentary on some of our thoughts. And uh, any questions you all have, I could surely uh, try to give an answer. Thank you, Councilman Barnes. I think our vice uh, chair. Has First something. of all, I do know your name and I know that you voted for us every time and I appreciate it. And I've heard your discussion about the department in city council meetings. So you are, we appreciate the thoughtfulness with which you look at all the issues, and I'm glad you think the communication is better. We always want to be, have good communication with the city, and um, our people in the department have been directed that we want that, but um, the city has been very responsive. They've invited us over. They've come over here and met with us, and we appreciate that. Um, I've noted the things that you listed, and I remember us talking about some of those economies of scale before, and I know that there are, it's, it's not as easy as you and I probably think it would be. But um, I appreciate you coming. I hope you'll come again. And thank you for the support that you've given us, and we'll do our best to live up to your expectations. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. And, Chair. and I just have a question, Councilman. I know I came on in the end of the defunding uh, error, and part of the reason I'm here today is because I saw the diversity it caused between the city and the police department. 
And so I know we've all been working really hard to try and bring us all back together and make this where we're all on the same page. And as far as I know, the 25% budget from everywhere that I've looked, that's what we've been receiving. So I just want to make that clear. It's not like we're getting anything we haven't already had. So we are always open to these dis discussions because we want to work together. We want to make this a win-win for everybody in this city. So anytime you guys want to have a meeting with us, we're here. And I'm open to listen. So thank you for being here and sharing with us today. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. But um, I, I think the whole notion of you're not getting anything you don't already have <clears throat> is more of a function of, well, th that's something we, as a city, feel like we can, we can do and not jeopardize, harm the rest of the city. But if there comes a time when uh, we can't give that 25% and have to go down to 20%, I don't want folks in Jefferson City deciding that that needs to happen. I want us to be able to have conversations with you and say, hey, because understand, we have over the last two years had eat, go through each department and said, hey, you have to make 10% cuts in your department. We did that. We didn't do that here, but we did that across the street with every department. And, and we did that not because we wanted to be malice or there's some um, discontent within a certain department, but that's where our budget was landing us. And until we got federal funding due to COVID, we would have had to exercise those 10% and some and even more in some departments. But if Jefferson City says, well, you have to give 25%, we wouldn't have been able to have the conversation with you about, hey, where are some where are some places that you can uh, make some cuts here, there, or what have you? So, um, so with all due respect, I, I understand what you're saying. And I well know how much we've been, we've been um, allocating as a part of our, our general budget. But I don't, I don't want the whole notion of someone else determining that that needs to happen without having conversation with us. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I did want to mention <clears throat> before I go on with the rest of the agenda, um, the Board of Police Commissioners uh, has been served a certificate to say that uh, the Justice Department is going to investigate the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. And I wanted on public record that the police department takes this investigation very seriously. Uh, we also welcome the DOJ investigation and we're gonna do everything in our power to assist in bringing the truth to the forefront concerning the areas of investigation, i.e. hiring practices, promotions, discipline, and other matters within the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. Lastly, um, we will update the community and the press on a continued basis as we're given information that we can share uh, about the investigation. And so it, it had been stated that we hadn't addressed it. Of course, we had a lot of things on our plate. Uh, we're going through uh, applications for our new chief. And so um, we didn't uh, get into it in our closed session the other day, but at the end of this meeting, we will further have conversation about the DOJ investigation. All right, um, crime reporting, gun crime, Deputy Chief Mike Wood. Good morning. 